So let's take a look at uh, 4.17. Uh, here we have a, uh, we're working with rats here in the uh, coat color in rats, and we have a couple of different phenotypes, right? So if the rat has at least one big A allele and one big B allele, it has a gray coat color. If it has one big A allele and two little Bs, it has a yellow coat color. If it has two little A's and at least one big B, it has a black coat color. And two little A's and two little B's, it has a cream coat color. And we can kind of diagram what might be going on here. So let's say the rats start with a cream coat color. And if they have one big A allele, they have at least one big A. Well, now they are uh, yellow. And if they have at least one, uh, they don't have a, a big A, but they have at least one big B allele, well, then they're black. But if they have both a big A allele and a big B allele, I don't know the best way to write this here. I can probably diagram this like maybe with the dashed line. They will be gray. So almost like uh, if, uh, let's say, A makes the yellow pigment, B makes the black pigment, and if both of these pigments are being, you know, dumped into the, the, the hair, um, when the hair is being made, uh, then it will appear gray. But if it can't make one of the pigments, then you know it's stuck. It's just yellow. If, say if it can't make the black pigment, it's yellow. And if it can't make the yellow pigment, well then it's black. But if you have both of those pigments available, then the the rat appears gray. Now there's a third gene pair called C, um, and this one determines whether or not the color uh, color will be produced at all. So two big C's and a big C and a little C color and two little C's we're getting a uh, albino or white let's say albino or colorless we'll say albino albino color yeah albino rat I mean, it doesn't matter what if it has a, two big A's and two big B's it doesn't matter if it has two little C's it's going to look albino so this question here wants us to um, take a look at these crosses down here. We have five different crosses to look at and determine the F1 phenotypic ratio. So let's take a look here. So the F1 phenotypic ratio of this cross here, so in A, we're crossing two big A's, two little B's, two big C's with two little A's, two big B's, two little C's. And these rats over here, see this is dad and this is mom, it can only make one type of gamete. Uh, it's going to be big A, little b, and a big C. And this one over here, it can only make one type of gamete, right? Because it only has little a's, only has big b's, and only has little c's. So fertilization here, all of the offspring are going to have a big A and a little a, big b and a little b, big C and a little C. Okay, well this is good news for assuming having uh, some pigment in your fur is a good thing uh, because all these rats have at least one big C allele. Well, they all have one big C allele exactly, so they all make color and they all have one big A and one big B. So if we go back to our diagram of what's going on copy that, paste this down here, maybe I can shrink it just a little bit, and I can, I need to shrink it a little more, hopefully you can see that still, uh, we have at least one big A, one big B, so we're making yellow and black pigments, those are both present, so the, the rats are all gray colored, okay, all gray, 
from that cross. So let's take a look at B now. So B is uh, big A, little a, big B, big B, big C, big C, cross to two big A's, big B, little b, two little c's. Now, this parent right here, let's call this dad again, can make two types of gametes because you know we have one heterozygous gene pair here. Uh, so one half of the gametes are going to have a big A, a big B, and a big C because it only has big B's and big C's. And one half are going to be little a, big B, big C. And so let's see. For this one over here, uh, same thing. So it's homozygous for A, homozygous for C, little c's in this case, but heterozygous for B. So it can make two genetically different gametes. One half of them are going to have a big A, a big B, and a little c. And one half are going to have a big A, a little b, and a little c. So to get the, the phenotypic ratio of the offspring, we need to combine these, these right here. Um, and we could do that with a Punnett square, I think. That would probably be the best, best way to do this. Uh, so I'm going to put these genotypes up the top and these along the side. So let's see, A, B, C, little a, big B, big C, okay, and put these ones over here, put that one here, and we have big A, B, C, big A, big B, little c, uh, like that, little b, little c, uh, little a, big b, big c, big a, little b, little c. Okay, now let's look at, now these are all the possible genotypes of uh, the rats from the cross of these two parents here. And uh, so these are all going to have color color here, yep, color here, because they all have at least one big C and one little c. Okay, good. Um, they all also have at least one big A and one big B. Okay, so they're all going to be gray. Gray, 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 and gray. Okay, that question was uh, simple. Okay, let's go on to C now. So for C, we are crossing uh, a triply heterozygous rat with a, a doubly heterozygous and uh, two little c's, homozygous for, for little c, recessive c. Okay, so easiest thing to do here is use the fourth line method and uh, break these up into monohybrid crosses. So big A, little a, cross the big A, little a. That's going to be one quarter of the progeny. You're going to have two big A's, two quarter, a big A and a little a, one quarter, two little a's. Of these, one quarter are going to be two big b's, two quarter are going to be a big b and a little b, and a one quarter, two little b's. And let's see if I can, oh, can I copy and paste this? This would be great. Let's see if I can move this down here just a little bit. 
and then I can just copy this. I think that works. I can shrink it a little bit, right? Okay, and then copy and paste that. Okay, that works. Now, um, now we have to take a look at C, right? So, just looking at these right here, if we did a quick Punnett square, we would see no pun intended, we would see that half of the progeny are going to have a big C and a little c, and the other half are going to have two little c's. So one half, two big c's, one half, sorry, big c and a little c, and one half, two little c's. So let's see if I can copy and paste this. Copy and paste this one. Oh, it's a little too big. When I shrink it, it gets really hard to, to see. But it's the same thing every time, so maybe we don't need to... Maybe it's not necessary that we see it so clearly. Oh, I'm really running out of room down here. Can I shrink that? Come on, let me shrink it. Shrinking it even more. Okay. So now we can multiply these across. Um, let us see. Lot of multiplication to do here. So 1 quarter, 1 quarter, 1 half is going to be 1 out of 32. 2 big A's, 2 big B's, big C, little c. Uh, 1, 2, 1, that's going to be 2 out of 32. 2 big A's. Oh, I messed up already, didn't I? So we could do it this way, right? We could multiply all these down here, and we could determine the phenotypes uh, from the genotypes. Um, but I wonder if there is a shortcut we can we can take. I think there might be. So let me copy this, and I'm going to paste this down here. So what if we just consider the phenotypes, right? So. Let's break these into monohybrid crosses. Uh, so big A, little a, cross to big A, little a, is going to give us 3 quarter progeny with at least one big A allele and 1 quarter progeny with two little a's. OK, now let's take a look at the b's, big B heterozygous for B cross the heterozygous for B, that is also going to give us three quarter progeny that have at least one big B allele and one quarter that have two little Bs. Okay, I think this might be significantly easier. A significantly easier way to approach this problem is just focusing on the phenotypes. And sometimes you can do that, um, especially when you're working with dominant traits where there's no incomplete dominance. Um, where, where there, there's complete dominance, not incomplete dominance. So, and for these right here, um, for the C's, big C, little c, cross the two little c's, you know, one half are going to be big C, little c, and one half are two little c's. Okay, significantly easier, I think. Half, big C, little c, one half, little c, little c. Much easier, much, much easier. Okay, so multiply these. 
and let's see if we can get the right answer here. So 9 out of 4 and 4, 9 out of 32 are going to have at least one big A, one big B, and are going to be heterozygous for C. 9 out of 32 are going to have one big A. This is going to be 3 out of 32, sorry. 3 out of 32, one big A, two little Bs, and oh, I messed up again. Okay, I'm going too fast, right? So it is 9 out of 32, because I'm going up here, big A, big B, two little Cs. At least one big A, one big B, two little Cs. So 3 out of 32 are going to have one big A, two little Bs, one big C. 3 out of 32 are going to have one big A, two little Bs, two little Cs. OK, down here, we are going to have 3 out of 32. We're going to have two little A's, one big B, one big C. 3 out of 32, two little A's, one big B, two little C's. 1 out of 32, 2 little a's, 2 little b's, 1 big c, and 1 out of 32, 2 little a's, 2 little b's, 2 little c's. OK, and the phenotypes of these, as long as we have 1 big a, 1 big b, and 1 big c, will be gray. Uh, 2 little c's, albino. 1 big a, no big b's. One big C, these will be yellow. And how do we know that? We can go up to our chart way up here. One big A, it's going to be yellow. One big B is going to be black. You have both. You are. You have both. You are gray. Um, so one big A. Two little b's, two little c's, albino. Two little a's, one big b, one big c, is going to be black. Two little a's, one big b, is going to be two little c's, albino. Two little a's, two little b's, one big c. This is going to be cream. First time we've seen cream and then albino for the last one. OK, so we should see um, how many albinos do we have here? So under albino, we, should, we have 9 plus 3 is 12, plus 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. So 16 out of 32 are going to be albino, or 1 half. 9 out of 32 are going to be gray. Right, 9 out of 32. Um, 3 out of 32 are yellow. And probably 3 out of 32 are black. And 1 out of 32 are cream. OK. Um, that's how you answer that question. Cool. Now let, let's take a look at part D. So part D is, well, what are we doing? We're crossing heterozygous A, homozygous big B, heterozygous C, cross to heterozygous A, homozygous B, heterozygous C. Now I wonder if there is, there's probably a shortcut here, but let's just start by considering only the phenotype. So three quarter, we'll break it up into individual, uh, treat them like monohybrid crosses. So heterozygous for A, cross the heterozygous for A. We're going to have three quarter with one of the progeny. We'll have one big A, one quarter, we'll have two little A's. How about for B? Well, all of 
you know, both parents are homozygous for big B here, so all the progeny are going to have two big B alleles, no matter whether they have a, a big A or two big A's or big A and a little a or two little a's, they all have two big B alleles. And for C, um, we know three quarter because we're crossing what heterozygous uh, for C cross the heterozygous for C. Uh, three quarter are going to have one big C allele and one quarter are going to have two little c's. Three quarter, one big c, one quarter, two little c's. OK, this one is easier than the last one. Now let's multiply across. Three quarter times three quarter, that's 9 out of 16, are going to have at least one big A, two big Bs, and one big C. This is 3 out of 16, one big A, two big Bs, uh, two little c's, three out of sixteen again, one one yep are gonna have two little a's, two big b's, one big c, one out of sixteen is gonna have two little a's, two big b's, and two little c's. So and the phenotypes here are gray. albino, because we have two little c's here, albino here, albino here, albino, and then here is going to be um, black, because we don't have a big A, but we have two big B's. So uh, 9 sixteenths gray to 4 sixteenths albino, combine these to 3 sixteenths black. OK, so that was fun. Uh, and E, let's see, is E similar? We're going to cross two big A's. No, a, a rat with two big A's, a big B and a little b, and a big C and a little c. That's a little different. Two big A's, big B, little b, and two little c's. Um, is it worth me doing this one? I mean, it's just more of the same. I will let you guys take a look at that one on your own. Uh, just it's the same procedure that we've been doing and uh, that, that I went over in A through D, and I'm sure you can figure that one out.